Imagine walking out onto the sand, hearing the waves lap against the shore. Take a seat and look up into the darkness. At first, you see a handful of bright stars, and then you notice a stream of cream and a dusting of white icing sugar comes through the centre of the sky. As your eyes adjust to the darkness, you notice the thousands upon thousands of stars in a dark sky sanctuary. My name is Deborah, and I have the pleasure of this beautiful scenario being part of my story. I came to Aotea, Great Barrier Island, in 2014. I just got married, I was newly pregnant, that's my little boy there, and I was very excited to be making my home in this pristine environment. I had been raised in rural New Zealand, and you know, I had grown up riding horses, and in the evenings, I would look at the stars. I loved them. But I'd spent my early adult life in cities, mainly in London, and then back here in New Zealand, between Auckland and Sydney. I'd really, really missed the stars, and it was such a joy to have them back. I joined the Aotea Astronomical Society and started devouring knowledge. At night, my young son and I would take a beanbag outside, lots of blankets, he would curl up in my lap, and we would look up at the stars. I would point out planets and the constellations to him. My name is Hilda. It is my pleasure to be living on Great Barrier Island, to call New Zealand my home, and to be here today with you. I came to New Zealand from the Netherlands in my late twenties. I went on the, on the boat to Great Barrier Island and on the boat I met two guys, one was Swiss and the other one was Welsh, and they became my buddies for the days we spent on the island. We went to beaches together, stunning, lonely beaches, soaked in the hot pools, surrounded by lush bush, and hiked Hirakimata, Mount Hobson, to have a look at the amazing view from the top. We hitchhiked everywhere. But one night, we wanted to go to the pub and no ride was found, so we walked there and it took us a while. Um, so when we got there, the guy suggested that I chat up a local to give us a ride back. So I did that and that was Roger. And 20 years on, Roger and I are still together, <laughs> living, <laughs> living on top of the cliffs, above Schooner Bay, looking out to Hauturu, Little Barrier Island. Now, the jump from the Netherlands to Great Barrier was a big one. In Western Europe, light pollution has taken away most of the magic of the night sky. And um, so, like for many people in light polluted places, I hadn't been aware what I was missing. Um, my Milky Way was a chocolate bar. <laughs> so, arriving at Great Bar Barrier under these really dark skies. I was just in awe of what was above me. Um, and um, a couple of years ago, when uh, the dark sky application, word of the dark, dark sky application spread, I became a member of the Great Barrier Astronomy Club. And that's where our stories joined. Yeah. So Great Barrier has stunning beaches, mountainous terrain and lush bush and it's always attracted visitors. And tourism is a really important part of our island's income stream. This has led us to think strategically about the type of visitors we would like to attract to our island. Last year, when we became a dark sky sanctuary, we told the world that our island is special. It is incredibly dark. In fact, as Richard told us before, a sanctuary has the darkest readings of all the dark sky places, 
in the world. There are over 100 dark sky places, but there are only four dark sky sanctuaries. And because Great Barrier Island is so dark, it's the perfect backdrop for spectacular stars. Great Barrier Island is so dark because it's got plenty of ocean around it so that the light dome from Auckland just can't touch us, as Richard has just explained as well. The island is also sparsely populated. On an island of 50 k's long, there's only just under a 1,000 people. So that uh, works to our advantage as well. Um, and we're all off the grid. So every household on Great Barrier Island generates its own power, which means that we are frugal with our power. We use five watt light bulbs. We turn lights off. We don't use them. We hang our washing on the line. And we tell our children that they can't watch telly because there's not enough power. <laughs> Not having reticulated power also means that we haven't got street lighting. So at night, when it gets dark, it does get dark. Yeah, it does get really dark. Now, imagine sitting down in a comfy moon chair, gazing up at the stars and letting us guide you through them. Make friends with the constellations that you've heard of since before you can remember. In the telescope, look at the place where stars are born. And look at this place over here, which holds those old timer stars, those stars that have 10 billion or more years under their belts. Look at Jupiter and its moons, Saturn and its rings, and Mars blazing orange red. Our company, Good Heavens, was born to give visitors to our island exactly this experience. And astro tourists are a great match for Great Barrier. Astro tourism is considerate to our fragile environment. It has a tiny environmental footprint. We do our tours outside, in nature. We use our equipment again and again. We pour a warming cup of hot chocolate into enamel mugs, and at the end of the evening, when everything is packed away, no trace of us is left. Just memories and footprints. Great Barrier, oh sorry, Good Heavens offers dark sky experiences for groups where um, everybody can come along or private experiences where we will come to you with or without dinner. We'll show you constellations and special stars and deep sky objects, some are unique to the southern hemisphere. And to do this, we have a few tools like our naked eye. We use laser pointers, night sky binoculars, that Astron cells, <laughs> and um, we also use eight-inch telescopes to um, look deep into space and um, to get a close view, view of the planets as well. We look at the moon if she's out, and we look at the Milky Way when she's not. We tell starry stories, um, so we, we don't just um, have astronomical facts, but we have got other inter interesting facts too that we'd like to share with you. That's right. When you explore the universe with us, you get a magic mix. We've got the dark sky with its outstanding beauty, astronomical facts and starry stories. So we will make an impression, and that impression might just lead to a stepping stone to future exploration of our universe. As one of our guests told us, I've now made friends with the stars. Another guest said, I now have a map to the world above, and I'm excited to learn more. Our ancestors had an intimate knowledge of the stars. We haven't got that so much any, anymore, but we, we are aiming to get that back. 
to many cultures around the world, this constellation is... Oh, yeah, so this constellation here is that of the scorpion, Scorpius. But in New Zealand, where scorpions are lacking, we see something different. We see, um, in this star pattern, we see the fish hook that Maui used to pull to the surface a giant ray, Te Ika, a Maui. Before he could even haul it into the boat, his greedy brothers chopped gullies and mountains into it. And that was before this giant ray, this Te Ika a Maui became the North Island of New Zealand. <laughs> The waka that Maui and his brothers used became the South Island of New Zealand, and the anchor is Stewart Island. The fish hook was then tossed into the sky to remind us how New Zealand came to be, uh, to warn us against greed, and to tell us not to underestimate our younger siblings. <laughs> And this is the constellation Crux, better known by, I'm sure, everyone in this room as the Southern Cross. It's got four bright stars, it's a distinct cross shape, and it points to the South Celestial Pole. Useful, especially if you don't have a compass in your hand. So there's a few different ways that we can find the South Celestial Pole using the Southern Cross. I'll show you my favourite. So here we've got crux, and this long arm, if we extrapolate a point using that line, got the pointers here, take a line through them. Now where these two lines meet, here and here, this would be the South Celestial Pole, if we were outside and these were the real stars. And from this point that the stars all turn around, if we drop that straight down, we would get due south. And that was one of the ways that people used to use to, to find south and to aid their navigation. You'll also notice another feature. This area here, it's really dark. It's called the Colsac Nebula. This nebula is a dense cloud of gas and dust and it obscures all the light from the stars behind it. The story of the stars changes with the seasons. Constellations cycle through the sky and planets wander amongst the stars. Good Heavens, as a tour company, has just completed its first year of journeying through the universe. Maui's fish hook is once again up above, along with Jupiter and Saturn, the planets. And to our south, eternally, is the Southern Cross. All in pristine darkness, a darkness we are planning to preserve. And as Richard has already told us, you can help, even though you're not living on our island. You can help by choosing warmer colored lighting with a lower wattage and shield your outside lights so that the light doesn't go up into the sky. These small changes can have a big impact. Yeah. We invite you to come to Great Barrier Island and explore our dark skies. See the sheer number of stars. Experience the illumination that they give. It really is amazing. See the sweet sweep of the Milky Way as it rises out of the ocean and divides the sky. Come in autumn or winter or spring, that's when the skies are the most spectacular. The stars have become a cherished part of our stories. Come to our island, stay for a while, Make friends with the stars. They can become part of your stories too.
Thank you. Thank you.